Example 9. The probability density function of a continuous random variable x is defined as follow. So you are given the PDF. For the part A, obtain the cumulative distribution function. So you have uh, you need to find the CDF from the PDF. So from the PDF to CDF, you need to integrate. You need to integrate every single function that listed here in order to find out the the CDF, which is the capital letter of F. So we have been discussed the same example from the previous one, which is the example eight. So the, the big difference from the previous example to this one, um, for this example, you are given more than one uh, non-zero function, which is you have one and two non-zero function. Okay, so before we form the CDF, we do the working for finding the CDF. It's better um, we write it in this form, in this kind of interval, in order to identify how many interval that we should find out uh, the CDF. So, we just denote all the given interval, starting from 0 until 1, okay, from 0 until 1, and followed by 1 until 2, so 1 until 2. So, we have since we have two non-zero function, which is this is for the 6x over 17, this is for the 6x square over 17, and zero for the otherwise. So all together means that we can notice here all together we have one, two, three, and four interval that need to find out the CDF. Okay, so we're going to start with the first interval. <clears throat> the first interval is for the x less than 0. So I'm going to write, uh, write on the interval first, or the four interval. I'm just going to write on the order for interval. So for <clears throat> from the x less than 0, and then followed by x greater or equal than 0, less than 1, and then followed by x greater or equal than 1, less than 2. And lastly, the fourth interval for x greater or equal than 2. Okay, so then <clears throat> we are going to continue with the finding of the CDF. Okay, for the first interval, the capital letter of fx should be equals to integra integration of negative infinity. It should be from the negative infinity until x. Right, it should be an negativity and the x. So the function that should be right on here should be zero. So integration of zero function will give you zero. Okay, and then uh, the next column is finding the f of c. F of c is c is actually the upper limit for that interval. For that interval, okay. So since this is the uh, uh, x less than zero, so the, this is the upper limit. So we are going to find out the f of zero. Right, f of 0. So this is a 0. <clears throat> so 0 need to be substitute, need to be substitute into this function. So 0 substitute into the 0 function will give you 0. With f of 0 equals to 0. And then we are going to proceed with the second interval. For the second interval, the f of x should be Okay, second interval is starting from 0 until x. Okay, we should start from 0 until x. So since this is a cumulative, it should be cumulative from the beginning. So before we start from 0 until x, we should start with f of 0. So f of x is, is equals to f of 0 plus with 0 until x. With the function 6x over 17tx. Right, so f of 0, we have calculated from the uh, previous part, which is f of 0 equals to 0. Then you just need to integrate for this function, 6x over six, uh, 17 equals to 6x squared, 6x squared over uh, 2 times with 17, with the limit 0 to x, which is equals to 
we can cancel out this 3x squared over 17 right so we have done for the for that part and then we're going to proceed for, for the f of c so f of c is f of 1 why it is 1 because the upper limit here is 1 so i'm going to find out the f of 1 the maximum here is 1 so substitute 1 into this fx this function so substitute we are going to have 3 times 1 squared over 17 so we will get 3 over 17 right then continue with the next interval okay for the third interval we're going to write it as a f of x equals to okay for the third interval for the third interval this is the third interval we are going to integrate from 1 until x from 1 until x but you have to remember that before before we entering this interval we have accumulate from the beginning so the accumulation and up to 1 is referring to the f of 1 so we're going to write it here f of 1 plus with 1 until x with the integration of the function of the function 6x over 17 tx so f of 1 we have find out find out the f of 1 from this part so we're going to substitute here 3 over 17 plus with the integration of 6x over 17 you will get 6x square 6x square oh uh, this is should be 6x square then this is should be 6 we am going to erase this this is should be from 1 and the x so then we get 6x cubed over 17 with the limit 1 until x. Alright, we are going to solve it. 3 over 17 plus with this integration. So 6, uh, this substitute the limit. So 6x cubed over 17 minus 6 times 1 cubed over 17 so then if we simplify every single things here oh i forgot here it is this should be three here three right so at the end after you simplify you will get two x cubed over 17 plus with 1 over 17 or you can rewrite it in the single form single fraction which is 2x cubed plus 1 over 17 okay so for the last column last column uh, is the f of c so it should be f of 2 so f of 2 need to be substitute into this function 2 needs to be substitute here so f of 2 it should be equals to 2 times 2 cubed plus 1 over 17 so then you get 1 here right so proceed with the last interval so the last interval should be f of x equals to f of 2 plus with 2 anti x with the 0 function okay we are going to start with the f of 2 so f of 2 since 2 is here so we're going to integrate 2 anti x but before 2 anti x we already accumulate anti f of 2 so f of 2 anti integration of 2 anti x with the 0 function so f of 2 we have find out from this part which is f of 2 is this one which is equals to 1 so 1 plus with the integration of 0 equals to 0 so you will get 1 for this part Alright, so we have done for the CDF. And then write down the final answer. You have to write down in piecewise form. So PX, so F of X equals to. Okay, just copy down all the all the CDF that we have 
find out starting from zero and then followed by this one followed by this one and up with one okay you just copy the all this answer into the piecewise functions so the final answer should be zero for the x less than zero 3x squared over 17 for the x varies from 0 until 1 this is 3 2 x cubed plus 1 over 17 for the x varies from from 1 until 2 and lastly 1 for the x greater or equal than 2 right so so we have done for that part we are going to proceed right so proceed with b b1 the question asks to find the property of x less than 3 over 2 so since this is this the notation already in the form of less than so we can just right away write down px less than 3 over 2 equals to the f of 3 over 2 Okay, we are going to use the CDF since we already calculated for the CDF. We have found out the CDF. So you just substitute uh, 3 over 2 into the correct function of CDF. So we have to find out where is the uh, x equals to 3 over 2. So back to the answer here. So 3 over 2, 3 over 2 is uh, 1.5. So 1.5, it should be around here. Okay, it should be. 1.5 should be around here. This is 3 over 2. So means that we have to substitute uh, the value of x, which is 3 over 2, into this function. Okay, we're going to substitute here. So means here equals to 2 times 3 over 2 squared plus 1 over 17. So that will give you 31 over 68. Right, so then proceed next. Next uh, question asks to find the greater x la greater or equal than half. So you have to do something on that before using the CDF function. We need to change a bit. So px greater or equal than half is equals to 1 minus px less than half. So then we are going to use the CDF. So is equal to 1 minus capital letter of F of 1 over 2. So we are going to substitute 1 over 2 into the correct function of CDF. So back to this one. So 1 over 2, 1 over 2 is here. This is uh, 1 over 2, 0 0.5. So it, sh it should be substituted into this function. So then we are going to substitute here. It should be 1 minus 3 times... 1 over 2 squared over 17. So equals to 65 over 68. Wait. 65 over 68. Right. So continue. Next. Okay. Next is uh, x greater than 3 over 4, less than 4 over 3. So this one you just need to. You, uh, write it in the form of CDF, which is equals to f of 4 over 3 minus with f of 3 over 4. So you just need to substitute 4 over 3 and 3 over 4 into the correct function. So find out where is the 4 over 3. So you just need to um, okay, check, check it here. So that 4, 4 over 3 need to be substitute, need to be substitute into uh, the second function uh, and uh, 3 over 4 into the I mean 4 over 3 into the third 3 of 3 over 4 into the second so you just substitute so here it should be 2 times 4 over 3 square over 17 minus plus 1 wait 2 plus 1 minus Minus with 3 times 3 over 4 squared over 17. So then you get 103 over 432. Right. Lastly, 
Lastly, find the median. So the median, uh, the median is, how to find the median? The median is f of m equals to 0 0.5. Okay, so we have to find out this value where it's cut the uh, total area into half, which is equals to 0 0.5. Okay, but before that, we have to check out um, which interval that should be amps located. So, I'm going to go back from the previous part. Okay, so let's go through uh, the last column here. The last column here, uh, we have found out the f of 0 equals to 0. So, this is, since this is 0, so this interval it's not going to be your M's. M is not going to be here because the cumulative here until zero. All right, and then F of one, uh, if we calculate F of one, we get three over 17. So three over, three over 17 is less than 0 0.5. It is less than 0 0.5. We want to find out 0 0.5. If the cumulative is less than 0 0.5, then M should not be here. M should not be here because when you substitute the M into this function, you won't get 0 0.5 because it because it less than 0 0.5. The maximum area here is 3 over 17. It, it is less than 0 0.5. Right? So means here uh, means your M so meaning that your M should be located in this interval. Okay, M should be here since the cumulative here is anti one. So means uh, means from zero anti one. The total area here is just anti three over seventeen. Okay, from one anti two, the total area is one. Okay, the total area is 1. So, means 0 0.5 should be here. So, this is your M. So, after we have found out the location of M, okay, just find out, find out it correctly. So, then you can just substitute the M into that function. So, we are going to substitute M into this function. Right, so back to this part. Since, since M should be in between of, in between of 0, uh, 1 and, sorry, 1 and 2. So, means that F of M is, should be equals to 2 times M cubed plus 1 over 17 equals to 0 0.5. Okay. So, we're going to solve it. So, 2m cubed plus 1 equals to, equals to 70 multiplied with 0 0.5. So, the m cubed here should be 17 times 0 0.5 minus 1 over 2. So, that will give you m equals to 1.55. So, since this is the only solution for m, Okay, and then um, before that, just make sure, just to make sure uh, it is in the correct uh, interval, just check whether it is included between the correct range. So, since this is in the, in the correct interval, so that's the final answer. So, the median here is 1.55. Okay, now let's discuss the last example for this chapter, which is example 10. The cumulative distribution function, or in short form, is CDF, denoted by the capital letter of fx of a continuous random variable, is defined as follow. <coughs> For the part A, the question asks to find the values of the constant A and B. To find all those values, you have to be clearly understood that since this is a continuous random variable, the term continuous itself is already described. It should be continuous. The function should be continuous on every single x for the given interval. <clears throat> so in order to do that, just check the function, the given function. So since this is the a and this is the b, so to find out the a, we can substitute whether you can substitute 
uh, the value of 0 or the value of 4 into the function of fx, the CDF function. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, substitute the value of 0. So if you choose to substitute the value of 0 into the function of f, so it means that we have to substitute uh, the value of 0 also for the function before that. For this uh, for the second function so I'm going to write this equation uh, become f of 0 equals to f also f of 0 <clears throat> okay why we equate this f0 equals to f0 because since this is a continuous when we substitute 0 for this function it should equals it should equals when we substitute this 0 into this function okay in order to make sure it's continuous on every single x. Okay, so to differentiate between these uh, two substitutions, I'm going to write this uh, as a negative here to represent the left side and the positive to represent the right side. So it means that f of 0 to be substituted to the function from the left side and the other one, f of 0 or positive, means that 0 to be substituted on the uh, right side of the fun function on the right side. <coughs> So, for the f of 0 from the left side, we are going to substitute. Uh, I'm going to erase this. So, we are going to substitute f of 0 for the left side, which means that for x less than 0. So, substitute for this function. We are going to have 1 over 12 times 2 plus with 0. x will be 0 equals to substitute this 0 for this function, which is a plus x over 6. x will be 0, so 0 over 6. Okay, just be reminded that be reminded that this uh, negative and positive signs just to differentiate uh, which function that need to be substituted. Right, so we are going to solve it. So for the left side, we are going to have a 1 over 6. The right side, you are going to have the A. So the A is 1 over 6. <coughs> okay, then, then we are going to find the value of B. So since this is the B, so the function B plus x over 12 is for the interval 4 to 6. So we're going to choose either one of these value, whether 4 or 6. So I'm going to use to 6. Because when we substitute 6, which is 6, we have to substitute 6 into this function and also substitute this 6 into the next function. So this is quite easier uh, rather, than we cho rather than choosing the 4. So I'm going to write here, uh, write the f of 6 from the left equals to f of 6 from the right. <coughs> So f of 6 from the left, we're going to erase it. f of 6 from the left means that for x less than 6. I'm going to substitute this. So it will be b plus x will be 6. 6 over 12 equals to this one equals to 1. So since uh, 6 from the right side is this function, represented by this function. So we're going to solve it. So b equals to 1 minus 6 over 12, which is... Um, 1 over 2. So, B will equals to 1 over 2. Okay, then we're going to proceed with the part B. So, for part B, the question asks to find the probability density function. So, this is the uh, PDF. So, I'm going to back to the question. <coughs> okay, you have to be uh, to be reminded that if uh, we want to convert from the CDF, okay? Uh, the question uh, gives you the CDF and then you need to convert it to be to become a PDF function. <coughs> so what kind of operation that need to be used here? So from the CDF, going to change to PDF. So of course, we need to differentiate. We need to differentiate uh, all those uh, CDF function in order to get the PDF. So CDF or we can denote as a capital letter. This is the fx. So the target here is to finding this one. So we are going to differentiate every single function that listed here. Every single, every single function need to be differentiated. Okay, so we are going to start with the first function, which is 0. Right, so I'm going to write here. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, do not here by first. First means that for the first uh, interval, which is for x less than negative 2. Okay, we want to find the PDF. PDF. So in order to find the PDF, we have to differentiate 
the CDF. So the CDF for this function is 0. So if you differentiate 0, you get 0. And then for the second part, second interval, which is x varies from negative 2 to 0. To find the PDF, we have to differentiate the CDF, which is, uh, the given function is 1 over 12 times with 2 plus x. <coughs> so we are going to differentiate this one. But before that, it's better, we are, uh, it's better if we simplify this one first. So if you simplify, you get 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12x. So differentiate 1 over 6, of course, 0. Differentiate 1 over 6, 0. Differentiate 1 over 12x uh, will give you 1 over 12. Okay, next. The third function. Okay, so this is the third. This is the first, second, third, fourth, and the fifth function that we are going to differentiate. So we have set up for the first, second, and then uh, now we are going for the third. For the third function, from 0 until 4, the function here should be a plus a plus x over 6 since a is 1 over 6 so now we are going to differentiate but before that uh, we we should write the interval here which is x varies from 0 and 4 okay to find the fx we have to differentiate a plus x over 6 which is a is a 1 over 6 plus x over 6 so differentiate 1 over 6 will give you 0. Differentiate x over 6 will give you 1 over 6. <coughs> then we're going to proceed with the next function, which is the interval for x uh, varies from 4 until 6. Okay, so the PDF is differentiation. It's a product of differentiation of the function here. The function for the fourth, uh, for the, for the fourth interval is b plus x over 12. So b is 1 over 2. So we're going to substitute here. So it will be 1 over 2 plus x over 12. So differentiate this one. Differentiate 1 over 2 give you 0. Differentiate x over 12. You get 1 over 12. Okay, lastly. Lastly, for the x greater or equal than 6. So the fx is differentiation of 1 which is 0. So we have done for the differentiation all the function. And for the final answer, we have to sum up all the function that we have find out in a piecewise form, Okay, which is the final answer should be rewrite in this form. Right. <clears throat> um, before we rewrite, uh, let's check the the fx that we have find out, the product of differentiation, since we have 0 here, and this is 0, this 0, this 2 0, we are going to combine it. We are going to rewrite, you have to write down here is 0 for the otherwise. And then, if you check this one, uh, okay. So I'm going to write this for the 1 over 12. Okay, 1 over 12. 1 over 12, this 1 over 12 for the given interval. So I'm going to write this as a final answer, 1 over 12 for the function, for the interval x varies from negative 2 to 0. <coughs> and then, next we have 1 over 6 for this interval. Just copy down, so 1 over 6 for x greater equal than 0, less than 4. And lastly, also 1 over 12, 1 over 12 for x greater than greater or equal than 4 less than 6 and 0 for otherwise 0 is combination of these two these two intervals so uh, we're going to write it as a otherwise so that's the the answer for the part b <coughs> so for part c the question asks to calculate the probability from uh, 3 to 5 so since you have two options to calculate this probability, whether you are going to use the CDF or PDF. So since we already have the CDF, it's better we're going to use the CDF. It's much easier rather than use the uh, PDF. So I'm going to use the CDF, which is a capital letter. So to find out the probability of x greater than 3 less than 5, it is equivalent to f 
of 5 minus f of 3. We are going to substitute, we are going to substitute this, um, this maximum value. Yeah, the maximum value minus with this minimum value. So we're going to substitute 5 and 3 into the correct function. So since this is the CDF function, you have to be careful that you need to substitute this x into the CDF. So the CDF function is whatever given into the questions from the starting itself. So we're going to substitute uh, the 5 and 3 into this function, not the PDF. Okay, not this one. Okay, not the PDF. It should be the CDF. So we're going to sub substitute 5. So check the 5. Where is the 5? So 5 is in between of uh, 4 and 6. So we're going to substitute here. So F5 should be B is 1 over 2 plus with X is 5. X is 5 over 12 minus with F3. F3, we have to check where is the F3. F3 should be here in between 0 and 4. So we are going to substitute into this one. So is it, it's a minus of A. A is 1 over 6. Plus x over 6. So x should be 3. So calculate. So calculate at the end you will get 1 over 4 as a final answer for part C. So that's all for the last example. <laughs>